Hawaii's visitors relied on residents and workers to inform them of the alert, and many tourists speak a foreign language. So how did hotels handle the situation, and will the mistake impact tourism? Sarah Madison follows up in Waikiki. Bobby a lot of people, they were panicking. They had their suitcases ready to run with their suitcases. People were crying and everything, and this guy yelled out, let's pray for five minutes, and they all... You know, uh, it calmed everybody down. It was a moment no visitor wanted to experience in paradise. Officials in the tourism industry tell us hotels have emergency plans in place, but Saturday's false alarm was different. And the way the information was initially transmitted, some folks got it, some folks didn't. It came on the cell phone. And so it was very difficult to get a sense of, is this for real? Well, this is new for a lot of us, so, um, but uh, it's kind of the world we live in right now. When we talked to visitors, there were mixed reactions on how hotels handled the situation. But our hotel manager handled it very well. Uh, the information where to go wasn't real clear anywhere. Mufi Hanneman of the Hawaii Lodging and Tourism Authority says best practice is to stay in and stay tuned. Many of them, of course, when getting them inside, made sure that they were in the most secure part of the building. Uh, some of them went into the basement, others went into ballrooms. So we did what we had to do. It's my understand, and I saw videos of it. They had, they went on uh, the intercom. They did it through their TV channels, and they were very proactive getting the message out to the visitors in their hotels. But industry leaders agree everyone can do better, and discussions are already on the table when it comes time to being more prepared for a ballistic missile threat. So you're going to see uh, all the key decision makers and the agencies and everyone coming together, having serious, serious dialogue of uh, what our strengths and weaknesses were. And we also have a uh, tourism public safety workshop coming up conference at the end of uh, February. Now we're going to add this component to it uh, and engage the emergency management personnel so that we can be better informed. Sarah, the multi-million dollar question is, will this false alarm hurt our tourism industry? Kathy, experts say it's too soon to tell if the false alarm has negatively affected tourism. But a lot of visitors we talked to told us they will be coming back to Hawaii despite what happened. Kathy. All right. Thank you very much, Sarah. Now stay with KHON2 on air and online as we continue to get answers in the aftermath of the false alarm, including what's being done to keep us safe in the event of an actual threat.